Hello everyone, it's Bisho from the Off Grid Love Farm and uh, we're going to get our introduction into solar today. Now most people will already have some of these items. Flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, Stanley knife, a multimeter. You can pick them up for um, under $20. It's going to come in very handy. It's for uh, testing the voltages to make sure you get the right voltage and the, the right polarity, meaning you're negative and positive. Set of wire strippers, wire crimps, they're not a necessity, but they, they are good. You can crimp the wires other ways. And of course, uh, wire snips. I'll link up some where you can get all this stuff if you haven't got it. Obviously, you can get screwdrivers anywhere in a Stanley knife. I'll link up uh, something for the multimeter and possibly something for these ones. Uh, look, I buy the cheap stuff. I'm not a professional I, and it doesn't get used that often. So it, it's fine to get something that, you know, you're only going to use it a few times, but you do need to have these items ready if you need to do any maintenance at all. And uh, occasionally that, that will happen. Okay, obviously with our solar power, we're going to need some solar panels. Uh, my solar panels are all second hand and often people uh, are conned into upgrading their panels. Most solar panels have a 25 year service life, which is quite extensive. You'll find a lot of people will re replace their solar panels after five or six years. Uh, you know, several years, and there's still a lot left in those panels. The reason they upgrade is that the newer panels are more efficient, but uh, for what we're doing, we're keeping it on the cheap, and as long as it works. So these are second-hand panels. I have an excess of these panels everywhere, all given to me. <coughs> so they're, they're varying wattage. Now this one's a 190 watt um, panel. I don't know if you can see in there, it says 190 watts. I oh, know that, sorry, it's 210 watts. And it puts out 26.6 volts. So that's another thing we need to take into account, uh, the voltage that they put out. Being second-hand panels, sometimes you know, there's different connections. Uh, you know, I don't even worry about them. I cut them off and uh, I'll show you how to join these without using connectors. So these are different panels here again. Uh, max power is 191 watt, there we go, uh, and the voltage output is 26.3, similar to the other one. So the voltage, we, we shall get to that, there's a little bit of mathematics involved, it's very basic, and uh, let's move on. My solar panels, not ideal, uh, I only leased the premises here, so like, everything's kind of temporary. One, two, three of those panels I showed you before, they're uh, 210 watts each at 26 volts each. So that adds up to a capacity of uh, just under 80 volts in total. Solar controller will take a capacity up to 100 volts. So I'm coming in just under the 100 volts. We need to take that into account. We'll get into that further down the track. So I have three standalone systems. These four panels, run in one system, these two panels run another system, and those three panels over here are running the third system. Placement is important. I can move these panels around to suit winter and summer because the sun does change a lot. At the moment, the sun's directly overhead, and in winter it's over there and I need to get different angles. If you're putting on the roof of your house, uh, that's probably fine, it's going to pick up as long as it's in that kind of general direction, that'll be fine. Overcast days like today, that the ambient light still uh, generates a lot of power. It has to be uh, very overcast for you to get no power whatsoever. Okay, here we have the solar controller, the charger controller. These retail well under $200. In fact, I think they're not much over $100 for this particular one. This one's been running for, uh, I think, four years now. I never had an issue with it. Next to it is a, uh, the inverter. So that converts to 12 volt. I'm using a 12 volt system. 4,000 watt peak, 2,000 watt inverter. I think they retail for uh, around $250, maybe less, maybe slightly more. That will run my washing machine, uh, it runs my fridge. So there we go, so that, that's about $350 worth of components. Another inverter, this is a 10,000 watt inverter and uh, I can't find them on the market anymore but they're only like $150 and these ones are several years old and still work very well. Batteries, where do you get batteries from? Okay, so these batteries actually came out of a, a, an elevator shaft. They used them for the emergency system and they replaced them by law every four years. 
These batteries have a 20 year service life, so there's still a lot of life left in these batteries when I buy them. To buy them new, uh, you're looking at well over $1,000. To buy them second hand, uh, you get pick them up for a couple of hundred dollars. I have a bank of three there, so about $600 to, to set the batteries up, and it pretty much runs the majority of my house. It will even allow me to run power tools such as uh, a bandsaw, sanders, grinders, etc. I'm not sure how far each individual wants to go into their power. Uh, I'm completely off grid. I do live in a warehouse, so things are a bit rugged. It's not like I have power points everywhere. I have to run the leads out. So, uh, you know, that's not going to suit everyone, obviously. If you're expecting to be able to power your whole home up and have everything work as it uh, does with the on-grid power. That's not going to happen the way I'm showing you. So, uh, why am I standing here? Because if you are on off-grid power completely, there is one thing that you're going to have to have, and I don't use it very often, but there are times when we need a generator to, to power everything. Uh, I also do some welding and whatnot. My solar won't run my welder, so I'll use the generator for that. Uh, on inclement days, uh, it may take three or four days before the batteries are down so low that I need to start the generator to run everything. While it's running, I also charge the battery, so you, you will need a battery charger if you want to do something similar to what I'm doing. Some of the other components you're going to need is an isolation switch, which also acts as a fuse. You're going to need some heat shrink and some crimp joiners. I'll give you the links for all of those things. In fact, I'll give you the links for everything to get started. You just need to find your own solar panels and solar batteries. So you may be wondering, where are you going to put all this? Well, to get started, I think uh, perhaps you could set it up in the garage. Uh, if you have a garden shed, as long as it's somewhere out of the weather and away from excess dust. Which brings us to the solar panels. Where are we going to put those? You could put them on the garden shed roof, put them on a, a lean-to, or you could just lean them against the wall or place them on the ground as long as they're somewhere safe and won't get damaged. But a priority is making sure that they have the maximum amount of sun available all day to them. They also need to be firmly secured so that the wind can't lift them up. Building a small standalone solar system has many benefits. It's a great introduction into solar and all the idiosyncrasies that go along with it. It's a great learning curve and uh, I would highly recommend doing this first a worthwhile investment and will quickly pay dividends plus giving you peace of mind that knowing you've got power uh, if the power grid does go down you'll still have something as you get more proficient and uh, learn all the idiosyncrasies of solar power you can go ahead and add on to that system or you can create your next system so if you're still with me and think this is something you'd like to do then I'd encourage you to go out and get all the parts in the links provided and in our next video, we'll go through wiring up your standalone solar system. Hope this has been of some assistance and look forward to working with you. If you have any questions, just leave a message in the comment section and Kylie or myself will get to you. All right, so get out there, ask your friends, see if they've got any uh, solar panels laying around, try and source those secondhand solar panels and look around for those batteries. Uh, if you have any questions about the batteries, uh, just get a, a a picture or, or let me know what the batteries are and I can advise you but the components that I've put up there for us uh, I've ordered exactly the same thing again because I've been using them for years and uh, it's a very good value for money and will soon pay dividends all right it's uh, Bisho signing out here from the off-grid love farm everyone keep planting